Shinsha. Yeah, boy. What is up, my fantastic people? Welcome to Sheen Shots, and welcome back to Outward. Today's video is not a guide, nor is it lore related. Instead, this video is centered on a few mechanics I think should be added into the Outward game. This fantastic RPG has tons of unique items and features, but there is always room for more, am I right? Today I give you 5 things we desperately need in Outward. In order to do this list justice, I thought it was important to start out strong. Item number one we need in Outward is a wagon. The traveling merchant, known as the Soroborian Caravaner, is the only NPC in Outward who has his own wagon. This character travels around the land of Arai, offering you rare items and the chance to empty your pockets of precious gems and expensive gear. This vehicle would be an amazing addition to the game. Imagine you're playing Outward right now, and you enter an enormous cave with a plethora of enemies, and at least double the loot. You slay every monster and open every chest, but even with your 110 capacity backpack, you can barely hold half the loot you have earned. This is where the wagon comes in. You would be able to travel with a vehicle that has plenty of storage room. You could take the wagon all the way to a cave, park it right outside. As you defeat the enemies inside, you can loot all their bodies, knowing you can always exit the cave and dump your findings without going all the way back to town. This would also give players the opportunity to use a more powerful backpack early on in the game. The Glowstone Backpack is an amazing storage device that is rarely used because it lacks the space of Mafino's Trade Backpack and also lacks the ability to keep food from rotting like the Preservation Backpack. A wagon could potentially protect food from rotting while also giving a player much more storage room. This feature would free players of their instinctive desire to wear the same backpack every playthrough and give them an incentive to switch things up a bit. Additionally, a wagon would offer players the ability to travel with more armor sets and backup weapons. This would let players prepare more heavily for any particular enemy that they may come up against. Suppose you run into an Alpha Tonosaur while scouring the swamps near Monsoon. You decided to bring along a poisonous dagger because it offers much more damage than most of the starter daggers. However, the Alpha Tonosaur has extra defense against poison, and this prevents you from getting the upper hand against him. Now imagine you're pulling around a wagon half full of extra daggers and armor. Before you fight this monster, you can switch armors and grab your ice dagger which all dinosaurs are weak against. This mechanic would give players a chance to use many more of the awesome items in Outward without completely ruining the storage system. A player could actually stock up on ingredients for food rather than just eating pieces of meat all the time. The wagon would be a fantastic addition to the game and would be even cooler in co-op because your partner might be able to even ride on it. The Soroborian Caravaner already uses a wagon so this would not be a huge stretch for the devs to implement. What if bandits could even steal your wagon while you're in a cave, forcing you to track them down? I mean, come on, this would be such a fun mechanic. The second feature we need in Outward is a rideable deer. The land of R.I. does not have horses. This is probably due to how harsh the land is and how most of the animals in Outward are more aggressive than horses are. Nevertheless, Outward does have the Coral Horn and the Alpha Coral Horn. These animals are similar in, uh, to deer in shape, but much tougher than your average doe and buck. In fact, the Alpha Coral Horn is extremely difficult to kill even once you reach mid-game level gear. Their speed of attacks makes it almost impossible to get back up after they have knocked you down. Seriously, I mean these things are not to be taken lightly. What is interesting though, is that the Soroborian Caravaner has his own Alpha Coral Horn that he uses to pull his wagon around. Here is the beauty of the Coral Horn. First of all, they would give us Outward Fanatics a chance to stop running all over the maps again and again. It takes so long to get places, especially if you end up wearing heavy armor. The Coral Horn could offer players a substitute to the horse. And why stop there? Who else but the Coral Horn to pull your brand new wagon? A rideable deer in Outward would not only give players a much faster means of transportation, but it could also make use of the wagon to give us the full merchant experience. I can't even imagine traveling around in Outward with my trusty steed and hefty wagon in tow. Honestly, it'd be a completely different experience, but not a bad one at that. The only issue with the Coral Horn idea is that it takes away from one big aspect of the game. You're supposed to walk for a long time. That's the survival mechanic kicking in. If you could instantly get to every town, then you would never have to worry about starving to death or being attacked in your tent. Fortunately, I have thought a way to solve this. Make the Coral Horn an extremely expensive skill. This would not cost you a breakthrough point. It would essentially be another skill in the game that you could get from certain NPCs. The difference here being that the NPC would have to train your deer for you. You would need such a high amount of money to pay the NPC 
that you would have to choose between getting your skill trees first or getting a ride. And even then, you would just barely have enough money to buy the darn thing. I'm talking like 5,000 silver just to train the deer for you. That's pretty fair for a speedy ride around the game, I think. Additionally, this would prevent you from instantly buying the deer at the start of the game. You would have to survive in the harsh environment long enough to get the ride. Making this deer a skill would also fit into the mechanics of the game, since most abilities come in the form of these skills. I personally think this would be a fantastic addition to Outward. Would it be difficult to implement? Possibly. But there are plenty of ways to throw this into the game without even making a new area. But maybe that's what the devs are waiting for. Get us some rides, people, come on. While we are on the top of animals, let's dive into the third feature Outward needs. Pet Hyenas. Now I realize that Outward already has plenty of super cool pets. But I'm not talking about purely cosmetic pets who don't benefit you. I'm talking about armored hyenas that you could spawn in to help you fight. The bandits sometimes spawn in with an armored hyena that fight alongside them. We should be able to get one of these beasts as well. I can't tell you how many times I've been running around with my cosmetic pets and been so annoyed by their lack of awareness. They literally do nothing. An armored hyena or even an unarmored one would be such an amazing addition to the game. Just like the deer, this companion would be have to be a skill of some sort in order to keep with the mechanics. Maybe it could even be a new skill tree that could be added to the game called the trainer. All I know is that it's rough fighting all by yourself and an attack dog would be super helpful when it comes to getting your enemy's attention off of you. Currently, there is a way to summon a ghost that will help you demolish your enemies. However, this skill costs mana and is not always practical when it comes to boss fights. The armored hyena would be way better than the ghost. This animal would probably cost stamina instead of mana, and we all know they have some pretty fast attacks. This would also introduce an interesting concept that isn't really addressed in the game. Can enemies catch diseases? Well, it can be quite common to see uh, bandits fighting hyenas, especially if you're in co-op. It is really hard to tell if these bandits have been catching the infection debuff that these creatures can inflict. The infection debuff in itself causes the player to lose 3% to 10% health per minute. This might be useful in a fight if it could be buffed a little by a skill tree maybe. Ultimately, the pet hyena offers just one more unique way to play Outward. I feel that the game is amazing because you can play it 100 times and each build will be so different from the last one. So why not add a trainer tree full of faithful companions such as hyenas or maybe even pearl birds? Many video games thrive off of animal companions. Games such as Terraria and Minecraft do not need to be played with animals as allies at all. However, you can become quite powerful in those games if you do choose to use them. Hopefully we can see some sort of attack pet feature in the game someday soon. Until then, we can only dream and pretend those cosmetic pets are doing something. <laughs> we are now at the fourth feature, Outward Needs, and so far, we have some pretty good ones. Number four is actually pretty simple though, and very different from the others. We need some emotes. Seriously, like this is such a huge hole in the game. Outward is made to feel about as realistic of an RPG experience as can be. You are forced to eat on time, sleep when you're tired, and even make unique decisions such as choosing to fight giants rather than joining them. If you want to feel like you're really in a video game, then Outward definitely gives you that experience. So why is it that every time I make a campfire to cook food on, or warm up by, I don't have the option to make my character sit? Seriously, I should be able to sit down next to my fire rather than standing there like a robot. Now, there is a mod out there that gives you the, the player the option to do this, and I'm glad some others agree with me and that this is an option for PC players. However, not all our players have the ability to add mods, and those who can shouldn't have to. This needs to be added, guys. It would also be nice to see some other emotes in the game, such as waving, high-fiving for co-op, or maybe even a small victory dance. I just came up with a total of four emotes, and honestly, for a de smaller developer team, that's the perfect amount. Just a few simple effects that would add a friendlier atmosphere for the player. We need emotes. I do want to mention that Outward had, was de developed by a much smaller team than most equally ambitious RPGs, so it really isn't that surprising to find it is missing such a common feature. No hard feeling, guys, but for real, emotes can make all the difference. Finally, we have made it to the fifth feature that needs added to Outward, and that would be bounties. The way this RPG is currently, you are not obligated to do any part of the game other than where the three missions and two DLCs take you. This can become frustrating when you realize there are over a hundred different caves and unique locations in Outward. The campaign, if you want to call it that, does not even take you through half of those places. As a result, 
Most players end up burning out while trying to complete the missions and never get to fully immerse themselves in this crazy, dangerous world. Bounties are the solution to this problem. Instead of entering caves at random and hoping to find some goodies, you could actually be tasked to enter different areas and clear them out. This would give Outward another opportunity to use more of its NPCs. Each town could take an NPC who you do not regularly interact much with and give them a map of the region they reside in. For instance, a Sierrazo town guard would have a map of the entire region of Cherisonese. If you decide to talk to this guard, you would find that he will handsomely reward you to kill any particular monster in each one of the caves in that region. Maybe you have to kill a Vendival guard for 100 silver, or maybe you would be challenged to defeat the Wendigo in the bandit camp for 5 healing potions. Not only are the possibilities endless, but this would encourage players to explore every inch of the map rather than only visiting the main locations. Each region would have an expert who could give you bounties that you must fulfill by doing something in particular. Additionally, that expert would not actually tell you where to go. Rather, he would give you a task and send you in the general direction. For example, let's say you're in Harmattan talking to a so-called expert. The bounty you accept is to rescue the Trog merchant last seen in the southeast region outside of town. Most players would not have even known there was a Trog merchant, let alone that they had to rescue her. The bounties would give players small bits of information without actually giving anything away. Even though you now know there's a Trog merchant, you only know she resides in the southeast area of the map. You're given a clue and now must solve the mystery. Currently, the only way to find cool things in Outward is to walk around aimlessly exploring every nook and cranny of each region. Bounties would shake things up a bit and put some more excitement into the what we might call extra gameplay. Comment down below whether you think bounties are a good idea or not. In the last 10 or so minutes, we have discussed five pretty cool features Outward should include in any future updates. Will these ever be implemented? Maybe, maybe not. All depends on how many of you guys like this video and get the information out there. Even if we never see any of these features in Outward, it is still cool to think of the possibilities. I mean, none of us ever thought they were going to put totems into the game, but here we are. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully it made you want to play some more Outward. It's a great game and definitely deserves more of your time. Not that I have any more time to give. Is playing Outward 40 hours a week too much? I don't know. Anyway, thanks guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.